Hello, and welcome to Reimagining with Ray John. My name is Heather Smith, and I'm the Executive Director of Ray John Share Care, a small registered Canadian charity working in partnership with communities in Haiti and the Dominican Republic to reach their goals in sustainable development and social justice. This episode is a short preview, a special bonus glimpse into our upcoming full-length episode that will be released on February 3rd, 2024, entitled Facts, Fiction, and Forward to a Self-Made Haiti. The full episode takes us deep in conversation with renowned author and scholar Dr. Muriam J.A. Chancy, beloved author, artist, and poet Gabriel Lausson, and director of Rajon Share Care in Haiti, Mr. Renaud Thomas, as they share their insightful perspectives about the current Haitian socio-political situation, what Haitian communities are doing to survive, and what path forward exists for Haiti to rise above the news headlines and claim her right to a better future. But Haiti is so complex, so rich in history, so alive with culture, and so misunderstood and misrepresented in the West. It was very difficult to trim our conversation into a single podcast episode. And so, this bonus episode, a sneak peek if you will, gives us the opportunity to consider just one important and emerging issue affecting Haiti, the proposed deployment of a multinational security force to Haiti to fight gang terror and support the Haitian National Police, and originally to be led by Kenya. Since the time this conversation was recorded in early January, the Kenyan High Court has ruled that the plan to send officers to Haiti was unconstitutional, casting doubt on the future of the initiative. At this point, we only know that the Kenyan government plans to appeal the decision. Whether or not the force goes forward led by Kenya, whether or not another nation steps forward with an offer to lead, and whether the plan is cancelled altogether, we think this conversation is important to listen to. What are Haitians saying about the proposed security force? What concerns might the Haitian people have over such a force? What alternatives to resolving the gang crisis exist? So, welcome to Reimagining with Ray John. Thank you for joining us. Um, so I, I did wonder if if anyone wants to share any thoughts on this proposed security force um, potentially to be led by the Kenyan government. We're awaiting that decision at the end of the month. How are you feeling about even the idea of the force? Does anyone want to comment? Well, I, w- I would say that outside intervention in Haiti is 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 historically not a good idea, right? The, as they say, the best, um, you know, when we, when we try to figure out outcome, future outcomes, you have to look at the past and no intervention has gone well in Haiti in the past. And we're looking at an intervention that's going to occur under a government that is not considered legitimate by the people themselves and is not legitimate by any, you know, metric. And so we really need to think about, you know, why was Kenya chosen Even the Kenyan uh, Supreme Court has been opposing this force, which is going to fall under the auspices of the UN. And so the idea that we need to simply replace the complexion of who goes into Haiti and that somehow will, you know, bring about a better outcome does not make a lot of sense. Uh, We also know that there was put forward a few years ago an accord by leaders across, you know, different communities in the Republic, the Montana Accord, where there was a plan, a Haitian-led plan that would have avoided what has now become, you know, an acute crisis, maybe not avoided it completely, but certainly mitigated it and uh, brought about a better uh, political you know, outcome for for everyone. And that was put aside by in, international actors. And so there's, there's, to my mind, not very much legitimacy to this intervention. And there also, the question for me is, why was the accord put aside when so many people who even don't agree politically within Haiti were willing to put aside their differences to come up with a plan for the country uh, that was roundly ignored and so I don't see how, if there are no Haitians, uh, Haitian leaders, Haitian voices that are part of this intervention plan uh, participating, how this is going to come, you know, how there will be a better outcome for the Haitian people. 
Right. It's, it's very telling that the Montana Accord did not receive international support, as you mentioned, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Gabrielle, what do you think? I, I uh, agree 100% that uh, the, the solution has to be uh, Asian-based uh, and uh, no outside intervention is going to uh, change anything. First, these people are going to go there and they will just uh, be uh, observers. They're not going to uh, change anything. They're not going to act on uh, on the uh, on the gangs. They're not going to change anything about the security. I think the the uh, hundred million. I can't remember exactly the amount that's going to cost. Would be better used to uh, uh, bring some uh, well needed development uh, in the country rather than another occupation. Um, but also, I I believe that. Uh, one thing that the, the, the Canadian, most of the American government should do uh, firsthand is to curtail the uh, uh, amount of uh, weapons that are currently uh, entering the country through the, the DR or through uh, regular ports because the, those weapons leaves the United States somehow. And the United States government must know about it. But why don't they act on it and the uh, curtail really like the if the uh, if they don't have any weapon the gangs like they can't fight so like if we keep uh, uh, allowing the weapons to be free flowing through the country it it will take forever before we can uh, solve this issue right uh, Renaud do you have any thoughts to add yes by by my side I would say. Uh, it's not gonna work. And we know it's not gonna work. Uh, the first reason is because they try to resolve the fake problems. So the gangs themselves are not the real problem of the country because they are controlled by smarter and more powerful guys. You know, like senators, deputy, or I don't know who they are, or, or like uh, businessmen. That's the most important uh, uh, location to, to, you know, to focus on. And also, in a national level, we think that the most important is to control the border. And also, the way the, the country uh, is, is organized, like there is no road, there is no infrastructure, it's going to be hard for any foreign soldier to fight with the guys uh, uh, unless they kill all people together. You know, because there's a mixture, uh, you know, uh, among the gangs and the lo local populations. So the, the, the best thing would be like they provide some assistance to Haitian, Haitian police, Haitian army, Haitian soldier, or give them like uh, uh, the supply they need, like weapon, like uh, blended cars, or I don't know, supply they need to do the operation. But have the, the foreign soldiers themselves come down to resolve the problem. They're going to stay there for a century. The problem is going to stay the same. So I'm sorry, but it's not going to work. If you enjoyed this bonus episode, please make sure to listen to the full episode available February 3rd, wherever podcasts are found. To learn more about Rage on Share Care and the work of our incredible Haitian partners, please visit our website at rageon.org. That's R-A-Y-J-O-N dot org. At rageon.org slash podcast, you'll also find links to our previous episodes, to Gabriel and Miriam's websites, and some additional resources for learning. Let us know what you think at Rajon SC. And please, keep exploring, keep learning about Haiti. Thank you. Merci en pile.